Welcome to Finland. Uh, my name is Kari Halonen and CEO and also founder of Toolbox Travel Marketing Consulting based here in Finland, Helsinki, the capital of Finland. And also Toolbox is operating not only in Finland but also in Russia and Baltic states. We are actually a consulting company uh, doing more like strategy working, also education and also some campaigning and marketing. And here's a little bit my background where Toolbox has been operating and uh, we have been been specialized for many years. We are partner of Kotri. We have been doing these Chinese tourist welcome courses, not only in, in the southern part of Finland, which is major part for the Chinese visitors, but also in Lapland. And we are continuing actively operating these uh, CTV training courses also in Russia and Baltic states. We have a very interesting part of our uh, trainings, our speakers, and uh, we have been selecting several, several speakers for, for Finland. First of all, we are going to the business college Helmi. There's Mrs. Anu Nylund, who is in charge for the uh, guide training program in Finland. And we have now started the very first guide training program for Chinese who are living in, in Helsinki or Greater Helsinki area. And we are hearing about what they are doing there at the moment. Secondly, we have Mrs. Bo Dong. She has been living here several years, over a decade. She is my also colleague doing these Chinese tourist welcome courses. And uh, she is talking about uh, tax free sales, especially at the Helsinki Vanta Airport, which is a, a very famous um, turnaround place for Chinese and Asian visitors heading to the Europe and Europeans heading to the Asia. What is about shopping at the moment in Finland? And thirdly, but not last, we are hearing a video from uh, Mrs. Maria Hart. She's the managing director of Travel Experience. And Helsinki especially has been an mm, important place for technical visit groups. What is the sta stage at the moment for these technical visits? That's what we are hearing from Maria Hart. And last but not least, also we are interviewing one male visitor uh, from China, but working here in, in Tampere in ch at the GP Times office and Mr. Chipian Chang. We are talking about social media in China. So welcome to Finland. Hi, and welcome to Business College Helmi. Now we are going to meet Anu Nylund. students at the moment inside, uh, even though we do have totally more than 1,000 students in this center of studying, uh, not only business but as well tourism business. So we do have totally about 350 students who are studying tourism business and about 150 of them are adult students. We are going to meet some of them and we will explain to you how we are training uh, the Helsinki official guide here in, in Finland in our school. So welcome, please. Meet one of our trainers, the lecturers Ulla Maya Rauhiainen. Hello. Hello, Ulla Maya. You want to become a tour guide? Yes, okay. definitely. This is the correct place for you. Have a seat. Here is Sari. Also apply to our studies. Yeah, the professional uh, travel guide it requires about one year of uh, uh, training, uh, which we provide here in Helsinki, uh, here in Helmi. Uh, college, but also on tour. We do a lot of uh, practical uh, training with the real student uh, uh, tourists. And uh, then uh, another thing is very important that we learn from each other. We are having a, a platform called Moodle, where we can be in contact online all the time with uh, with the teachers and with the students as well. And as soon as uh, the student feels like uh, ready to try and show his or her skills. Then he can uh, participate in, in an exam where the evaluators represent three different uh, fields of the business, which is the employers, the employees, and the teachers. And after passing this uh, evaluation, uh, then the ready uh, tour guide can apply the membership in the local association of guides. In this case, we are happy to have a Helsinki, authorized Helsinki tourist guides that we train mainly in our uh, college. There are two official 
tour guide associations here in Helsinki. Am I right? That's because right. we are bilingual yes. That's country. Right. We are, Finland is a bilingual country, so there's a Swedish association and a Finnish association. But of course, uh, English is the mutual language in, in our field of uh, business. Yes. Thank you, Ulla Maja. Thank you. Welcome. So, you just met one of our Finnish teachers, Ulla Maja, and one of our Finnish students. And we do have here students from our other countries, and we need tutors and teachers as well to, to help us. And we are really glad to have Bo to, to join our Chinese uh, group. Hello, Bo. You are going to be the instructor for this or teacher for this course. Yes. So what are your expectations for this course? I hope in a year time these 22 students will complete all the courses and successfully graduate. Next year we will have a, a 22 authorized tour guides in Helsinki. How are these tour guides were chosen? Or these applicants? Uh, we did give them an the interview. So during the interview, they also have a task to complete. During the process of completing the, the, the task, we figured out whether they have a good motivation to study here, uh, whether they're qualified for this program. And why we are having a specialty for this Chinese tour guide program? Because we noticed that, that there were more and more Chinese tourists coming to Europe, to Finland. And in the Finnish market, they're missing Chinese-speaking staff. Therefore, we started this idea. And then we have 22 students, and one of them is here. Hello. So, what are your expectations for this course? Well, uh, since I have worked as a guide in Helsinki already for two years, I'm looking forward that I can have more certification and to get more knowledge. In this way, I can improve my um, uh, knowledge and also how to I can work better for my customers. So I joined this group and to meet more uh, uh, professional teachers and meet more friends here. Uh, have you been having time to look over for this course description? What are all these courses all about? Uh, yes, I have already taken a look of the uh, description of the courses. I think the courses is divided into two parts. One is like we need, do need to know some knowledges from the paper and also from ourselves. And also we also have a, a lot of activities like to visit more museums and also some, uh, not, uh, some activities outside, not only in the school. So I think it's really funny to get. Thank you so much and good luck. And now Thank we you. will meet another trainer of ours, Marit, and one of our students to tell you that all the students are not having exactly the same programs. Uh, we do have a system for that as well. So please. Hello, Marit. Hello. I heard you have a flu. I have a flu. So I come very close. Yeah, you yeah. have. Hey. Hello, and That's then we have a student. What's your name? Anna. Anna. So what we are having here? Yeah, we are having a conversation, meeting here with Anna. We are making a personalized study plan for Anna because it's very important as an adult learner that not everybody is doing every day the same things. But uh, we are talking about Anna's earlier competence here and uh, according to that we will choose the right courses for Anna and what kind of skills Anna could develop by herself, for instance, her hobbies or, or whatever interests she has. So this uh, college environment is not the only place where you learn or you practice your, your skills. And it's very important that all this kind of individualization that starts already when applying uh, to become a student in Helmi uh, College and uh, of course in Anna's case she has, uh, she has been working as a tour guide earlier so she really has uh, experience already uh, from the field and now she want to, wants to uh, put it, uh, make it visible as her further qualification studies. Thank you so much for this. Thank you. and. Uh, Get well. Get well. I will get well soon because of my uh, happy and energetic, energetic students. And uh, uh, 
we do have, Anna here is a, a Finnish uh, woman, but we do have a very multicultural group of students here. Uh, happy to have many of our Chinese students here. And uh, it's other nationalities as well. Other nationalities as well, and many different cultural backgrounds, which makes this training and uh, networking very rich and uh, really uh, teaching all of us a lot of uh, having all our cultures mixing together. It's really nice. Wonderful to hear. Thank you. So now we heard something about this uh, guide training in, in the business college Helmi. And our next guest will be Bo Dong. She has uh, been living in China for many years, and, and in China, of course, and she's born there, raised there, but now it is living in Finland. And she's talking about tax free shopping at the Helsinki Vantai Airport and shopping itself in, in Finland. So let's hear from that. Hello, Bo Dong. Hello. You are working for uh, University of Applied Science of Haga Heli as a teacher. Yes. Could you tell you a little bit of your background? Yes. As you can see, I'm originally from China. I've been living in Finland for 20 years. I complete all my studies here, uh, majoring in hospitality management and the tourism management. I had seven years working experience from five-star hotels in Helsinki. And in 2009, I started my teaching career as a Chinese language and culture teacher at Haga Helia, as you mentioned earlier. So this year, I started work for Hemi as a teacher tutor. I also work for Global Blue as a tax money refunder at Helsinki Wanda Airport. And today we are talking about about uh, shopping and especially how the Chinese are doing shopping at Helsinki Vantai Airport, mm -hmm. but also generally here in Finland. Yes. So, what are your experience at the Helsinki Vantai Airport? It's a it's a big gateway between Asia and Europe, and you are definitely going to see many Asians there. Yes, I did. During my three years working at Helsinki Vantai Airport, I already saw a lot of. Uh, Chinese customers coming to Finland. They did buy a lot of things when they stay here. Um, do you want to know what they, they they bought? Yes, of course. Please tell us. Okay, they were interested in the luxury products, first of all, because uh, the luxury products are more expensive in China, in the mainland China. Therefore, when they have a chance to visit Europe, they definitely go for the luxury products, yeah. So wh wherever these luxury products are coming from, made in Finland is not an issue then? No, no. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Finnair is our national air carrier, mm -hmm. and that's the reason why, especially Helsinki Vantai Airport, is having so many Asians. They are coming from Japan and China and from Korea, mm -hmm. from Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, from Thailand too, and uh, so tax-free is a big part of Helsinki Vantai Airport services. It is. It is. Do you have any uh, exact numbers on uh, how much the Chinese are spending money on, on the airport? Um, I have the, the number from Global Blue, but not from the, the airports. Mm -hmm. According to the Global Blue research, it says that uh, um, the Chinese spend about 815 euros per transaction. That's Do a lot. It is, it is. It's average number, but it is a lot, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, are they the leader here in, at the Helsinki Vantai Airport? And I wouldn't say that the leaders, but that you can see from the... St here I can show you one slice from uh, the computer. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we are watching, so can you all the audience to see a little bit this? This is January, May, and it's written in Finnish, but there's a general minus two, then Suomi means Finland minus two, and Ulkomaat, the third row, means the foreign countries, and Russia is num 11% down, so maybe the 
the recession and the ruble is is uh, as a currency, Russian currency has been putting Russians a little bit having more problematic situation. But the biggest climber is China. The bottom uh, blue color column, ten percent increase to between January and May 2014, comparing last year the same period of time. Yeah. And this figure is actually talking about a bad net's influence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from there we can see the growth of a Chinese tourist staying period. Mm -hmm. Yes, but in terms of the shopping in Finland, Chinese are not the big spenders. But in terms of the, I would say all of the world or the whole Europe, we are the leading country. Mm -hmm. mm. So, uh, how many flights there are from China to, to Helsinki, Vanta Airport? There are quite many. Yes, from Helsinki to Beijing to Shanghai, we have a daily base of flights. Mm -hmm. And from Helsinki to Hong Kong, in summertime, we have twice. But winter time, there's only once per day. And also, Finnair operate routes to Xi'an, the mm -hmm. middle city of China only in summertime, and Finnair do fly to Chongqing, Ju. Mm. Yes. Mm. Well, back to this shopping uh, traditions. So what are the items that uh, there are these luxury products that these Chinese customers and Chinese guests are purchasing at the Helsinki Vanta Airport? Well, they, they're actually interested in the high-end high uh, watches. Watches are made in Swiss. Mm -hmm. do have a really good image in China. So therefore Chinese tourists here are heading for that. Jewelries and also the the most expensive leather goods. Um, travel accessories, uh, shoes, cosmetics and the perfumes, or even the luxury wines and the spirits are getting popular in China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are these um, products mostly sell when uh, sold when they are coming to Finland or when they are leaving from Finland? They may buy something when they just arrive to Finland, but uh, as a practical reason, they wouldn't carry the things all over the tour. So in most of the cases, they would spend a lot of money on at their last stop before they fly back to China. Mm. We are always talking about that Finland is the closest uh, gate between Europe and Asia. Mm -hmm. How many hours flight there there is actually between Helsinki and Beijing, for example? Seven to eight hours. No, actually, seven and a half to eight hours mm -hmm. depends on the route. Yes. Can Helsinki Vanta Airport provide uh, services in Chinese? At the moment, at this airport, there are twenty eight staff speaking Chinese. So the most of the shops, they do have a Chinese-speaking staff. Uh, tax Refund Global Blue do have a three Chinese-speaking staff, including me. Yes, so I would say, yes, that the airport sort of noticed that the Chinese customers are getting more and more at this airport. So they should have a service available in Chinese. Mm -hmm. Finnair is having a strategy via Helsinki, meaning mm -hmm. that it's combining Europe to Asia, mm -hmm. and uh, Helsinki is, uh, has been coming very important hub. Uh, are you familiar with the stopover uh, challenges that we could also provide services for those Chinese who are waiting for the next flight to Europe or back, that they could make a visit uh, one day visit or staying overnight in Helsinki and then going back or continuing their flight. Uh, do you see that uh, Helsinki is attractive for Chinese customers and how, how you feel about facilities, shopping facilities for Chinese in Helsinki? I think Ch uh, Helsinki it is a very attractive Chinese uh, because it's a relatively new place to as a, uh, a holiday destination, mm. um, but uh, what is missing here is the activities. Because when Chinese traveler go abroad, they like to do a lot of things in limited time. So they're not just enjoy the sunshine at the beach. They want to have activities, mm. and they like to be told what they can do. Mm. 
do in the tour. What about the shopping possibilities? Should that shopping be included part of the program? Of course, shopping should be listed there mm. as an unforgettable reason. Mm. <laughs> Uh, what about the uh, price level? How you f- Scandinavian Nordic countries are having a reputation to be quite expensive destinations. So, what is the feedback from the Chinese? Um, yes, it is a little bit expensive here in the Nordic countries, but compared to the price in China, because in China we have the so-called import duties that is about uh, from 10 to 20 percentage top of the original price. Then we have the VAT, it's about a 17. And then we do have some other taxes, so that we call it the consumption tax. It is about 20%. So if you think about the price with those taxations, that would be much more expensive than the price they pay here in Nordic countries. How they are paying this, this, this uh, gifts or um, souvenirs? Is there a special credit card for the Chinese? There is a special credit card we call the Union Pay, Yin Lian Ka. Mm-hmm. And I noticed that some of the, the shop retailer shops in Helsinki already accept that the cars as well as the airports. Mm-hmm. And on that credit card you are there's a possibility also at uh, other credit cards also like uh, Visa or MasterCard. Yes, yes it is possible. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So how you see uh, shopping to be developing in, in the future? Is shopping still going to be a big part of the Chinese visitors program? I would say uh, shopping is a, one of the most important issues for Chinese tourists. But then again, the activities are important as well. So welcome back to China Global Webinar Studio here to Tampere, Finland. And we have now our third uh, video presentation or interview made by my, me. And this time we are talking about technical visits. Mrs. Mary Hart, uh, she is the managing director and owner of Travel Experience, one of the biggest DMC incoming agency here in Finland. And I've been working closely with this company with the technical visits for a few years and inviting uh, Chinese groups to come to see, especially Greater Helsinki area, the uh, different city departments. But she's a little bit worried about the current situation with technical visits. Let's hear the reasons for that. Hi, Maria. Hello, Kai. Could you tell me a little bit more about uh, the travel experience? Yes, the travel experience is established in 1998, so we are now 15 years old. Uh, we have been uh, operating the technical visits now for nine years, so quite a long time. What else are you doing here in Travel Experience? So, of course, we are an incoming tour operator and destination management company. And uh, we do leisure tour groups, programs, we do incentive uh, groups, meeting groups, conference groups, technical visit, some individual. And Finland is, of course, our main destination. But then we also do some groups, uh, post tours to the nearby countries, meaning Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Russia and Scandinavia, uh, uh, Baltic countries as well. Yes. How, how much do you have staff? How many staff? Yeah. Uh, currently there are six of us year-round and then in the summertime there's usually a couple more. So summer is our high season. Hmm. So you are specializing in technical visits? Uh, well, actually our company has uh, some more cornerstones. So we have uh, equal portions of our corporate travel incentives, corporates, other ones, and then uh, also leisure groups and then technical visits is one part. So. How long you have been working in this, this technical visit programs, in, especially in China? Uh, well, nine years at the moment. Yeah, mm. yeah. So most of the technical visit groups they do come from China, also some from Japan and other countries, but China is the main market for this. So, uh, are these Chinese groups coming fully around? Um, they do come year round. They used to have more periodicality. Uh, like April was the high season and September, October, but now uh, it has changed a little bit, so now also some other times. Yeah. What kind of groups are these technical visit groups? What is the typical Chinese group which is coming here to Finland? 
Uh, well, technical visit groups, of course, they tend to be governmental organizations. So there's some government uh, people from local authorities, might be also some business people with them. Small groups, uh, they tour around Scandinavia, so they don't usually come to Finland only, but also visit the other countries nearby. Uh, they might visit, for example, have a, a general lecture about city planning, how Helsinki is doing city planning, infrastructure, education system is very popular due to the uh, PISA studies that uh, Finland is quite high on the ranking of the education. So a lot of school visits, uh, visits to the authorities uh, planning the education system in Finland. Mm -hmm. uh, environmental protection is a very popular topic as well. And uh, nowadays new things like clean tech technology and uh, elderly care as well is quite popular. How you are handling these technical visit programs? You have a, a special status between the Helsinki city and Espoo city. Yes, that's municipalities. right. Yes, yeah. yeah, we are the uh, official uh, handling agent for Visit Helsinki and Visit Espoo. So we get the request from the agents. Usually they are uh, wholesalers, agents who have who are maybe specialized in Scandinavia, and they contact us when they have a group who wants to come on a technical visit. Uh, we issue first a reference letter to give the uh, possibility for them to apply for internal passport and internal permission to travel. And then when we get the concrete dates, then we uh, contact the authorities that are part of this process to ask if they can uh, accept this group to come to visit them. And we set the date, we issue an invitation letter and um, then if there's any changes to the dates, then we handle them separately. Is there any difference between these reference and invitation letters? But well, reference letter just gives say, so a confirmation that yes, this group is planning to come to Finland and yes, the authorities in, in general uh, have a possibility to arrange such a visit, that it's, it's, a, it's a real thing, so that this is the reason why they're coming to Finland. Mm. Whereas the invitation, then it's a concrete promise that the authorities are, are committed to meet with this group and then also we sort of like confirm that we are handling the handling the visit and uh, we are quite strict about uh, following this up so we also report to the Finnish consul offices in, in China so they know that these invitation letters are correct and uh, also the border border authorities then know that these are real. Yeah, uh, is this report once a month or weekly basis? Or? A weekly basis usually, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, have you had any challenges with this kind of invitation or reference letters? Well, I suppose the biggest challenge tends to be that the requests are always quite urgent. So once they contact mm. us, it means that the agent usually wants the confirmation very, very fast. And uh, when we, of course, then contact the authorities, they have also their main job, which is, which is to do whatever they are doing, the education or so on. So this comes on top of their normal job, so it may be delayed a little bit. They have to look into their staffing situation when they have the time to meet with the group. So it takes some time before we can confirm the meetings and then send the visa support letter. What is your experience? Uh, how uh, late uh, you can have this kind of uh, visa or passport uh, ready for the Chinese visitor? Is it like uh, one month prior to departure? I, I would say the process has to be start it yeah. one month or more before, otherwise it's quite possible that they, you run out of time and you will not get the visa in time. Have you done all these contacts with these local departments and cities beforehand about the products or are yes. they just like ad hoc basis? Uh, most of them are done on a yearly basis, so which means that then at the end of the year or in the beginning of the year we contact the authorities uh, who have said that they might be interested in uh, receiving these groups, uh, whether they are committed for the next year or not. Mm. So it, it, some changes year from year, but uh, at the moment they've been quite steady. Uh, who are your competitors in technical visits? Are those in Finland, other destinations, or could you consider that the other Scandinavian countries are those? or capitals are those competitors? Well, I suppose it's it's a little bit of both, because most of these groups, they come to Scandinavia as a whole destination, they don't come to Finland only, so they have these technical visits in Finland, Sweden, maybe, maybe in Denmark, so although the Scandinavian and other countries are competitors to us, but they are also supporting, so if they don't get the technical visits in Denmark or Sweden, they might also not come to Finland, so mm. uh, it's a little bit of both. Uh, 
But of course it is possible also that uh, the uh, agents might contact the authorities directly. So sometimes there's a little bit of crossing information, although the authorities should know that we are the official handling agent and they should come via us. Have you seen any advantages or disadvantages about that Finnair, the National Air Carrier of Finland, is actually having this VIA Helsinki strategy that the Finnair is coming directly from China and bring this Chinese to Finland? How do you feel about that? Well, definitely, of course, it's, it's a benefit to us that Finnair has direct flights. So most of these groups, they land in Helsinki and they start their program here and then they continue onwards to the rest of the Scandinavia. So if there was not if there was no direct flights from, from um, China with Finnair, then of course it's quite possible that they might go to some other countries. But now it's sort of like self-evident if they fly with Finnair that they will also stop in, in Finland, mm. which is a good thing for us. Yes. Some people have been saying that it's a little bit difficult to stop people, especially Asians at the airport, uh, to, to have like a stopovers in, in Finland. Uh, have you noticed this kind of uh, difficulties? Well, I suppose for, for individual travelers and, and, and leisure clients, it depends what kind of uh, airline tickets they are. But I, I, to my knowledge, Finnair is quite committed to promote stopover in, in Helsinki as well, and it should not increase the cost of the flight. Mm -hmm. What kind of groups are these technical visit groups? Are they male dominant? Yes. Are they big yes. groups or smaller groups? Uh, they tend to be between 6 and 12, maximum 15 persons, so quite quite small. Yeah. Mm. And what is the average length of stay here in, in Helsinki area, for example? Uh, well, to be honest, uh, it I think the average at the moment is probably two nights. Mm. Is it also for these uh, leisure clients who are, who are coming here individually for, for free time? Or do you consider that uh, these technical visit groups are maybe staying longer, mm. have you noticed? Um, I'm not 100% sure of that, how the statistics show, but I think of course the, the whole way of uh, traveling from, from China and Asia is that they want to travel through the whole of Scandinavia and maybe even drop by in, in London or so on, so of course then if the, if the traveling period is quite short, then it only leaves a couple of days per destination, so I think it's the normal for most, but of course technical visit groups might stay a little bit longer than tourists. So what is the current situation with these Chinese groups? Uh, how you feel uh, the situation today and what is the plan for the future? Uh, well, since the president in China um, asked the government groups to also travel within China rather than always go abroad, the technical visit numbers have gone down uh, quite a lot. So uh, the, the numbers are not quite as good at the moment and we are hoping that this will change and uh, <laughs> the numbers will go up again, but uh, at the moment we are not sure. How about the future? I've seen that still in Finland the bed nights have been increased, so it's more like the leisure clients than who are coming here. That, that yeah. was actually the situation already last year. Yeah, yeah I think it is the, the leisure business menu that has gone up, leisure travel. Mm. But uh, my hope of course is that then uh, these technical visit groups, they will uh, also get uh, uh, in a more serious levels and information about Finnish export industry, for example, if they come to visit a Finnish school system, that then there is this education um, export uh, project in Finland, uh, where they're trying to also export the knowledge, know-how of Finnish education system, so, and clean tech also. So I would hope that there would be some cooperation among travel business and then the uh, export industry. So what are you expecting from these Chinese tour operators and cooperation with Chinese Chinese travel industry? Uh, well, we would of course hope that we would get more uh, direct contacts to the uh, tour operators in China, so we could um, plan better programs for them, we could be more in control of the quality of the tour, so that the, uh, all the guides and interpreters are official, official city guides, and uh, that we can uh, promote the best possible travel products that Finland can offer, I mean, for example, after the technical visit, we could take them to Lapland to meet Santa Claus and visit, uh, for example, have husky rides and so on, and, and do also activities in, in Helsinki, take some cruise. So uh, make it a little bit more varied than what it is at the moment, so people don't just come in and leave country. Uh, you think that the infrastructure and the service level is enough for the Chinese, Chinese visitors? Uh, well, service level in, in general, of course, it's 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 fine as such, but uh, 
I think what we need a little bit more is uh, more Chinese language material, more Chinese speaking staff maybe in some central hotels and so on. So I think this is something that the Finnish travel industry is now trying to look into, how to welcome the Chinese travelers better. Mm. Would you like to add something more? Welcome to Finland. <laughs> Thank you. So that was Maria Hart and welcome back to the GP Times studio here in live Tampere, Finland. And uh, last, my, my guest is today from GP Times that have been working closely for s several years, almost a decade. And I have here Mr. Dennis Chibian Chang, and we are talking about social media in China. Uh, well, Dennis, what do you think about uh, how this uh, social media can help uh, destinations or, or companies in China? Yeah, I think this is a very good question and also, you know, of course, many people already mentioned that uh, social media is an edge-cutting way to do market in China, especially for these uh, tourism sectors. Um, and uh, I think besides of this uh, marketing tool, they also have another two important missions. One is you have to regard social media campaign as a research, research measure. So it's just like uh, if you regard like a social media buzz or social media conversation like a conversation at a round table session or at a cocktail party, that uh, before you join the conversation with your friend and the friend of your friend, you have to understand what they are already talking about, what kind of topic they are mentioned, and um, is there something specially, uh, particularly in connection with you. So you need to understand that, and a good social media campaign will uncover all this kind of reality about the social media discussion about you. And uh, also, a good one can also make uh, direct sales on social media. Because you know, when people, you know, like we have this user engaging content, and with people, mm, you know, engaged in the conversation, actually they are become easier to be exposed to your sales force. And they also become, uh, you know, because they initiate the talk, they start the talk based on their truly, mm, truly uh, willingness. So they would like to talk with your, um, uh, with your sales force or with their peers, like to, you know, to convince and interested in your service or product. So, a good social media campaign should be like a all-in-one package, including research, marketing, and uh, sales boost. What about mm -hmm. the evaluation of of this kind of uh, social media campaign? Ca can it be easily evaluated? Uh, I think, of course, we need to do a lot of, of uh, good research before you, you know, you, you start this uh, social media campaign. You know, campaign is not only about how to write or how to, you know, to, to make the viewership or do something like that. It's more like uh, how you can understand that. And if you, c the most important thing is, you have to discuss. You have to discuss with your peers and with your. I mean, the peers is like uh, the customer and uh, the customer who has the similar social status in their reality. You have to communicate, you know, to, to generate a forum for them. So, of course, planning is very important and research is also as important as that. Of course, on top of that, you need to have a lot of good bloggers or travel writers to help you to fulfill the goals. <laughs> Talking about the bloggers, <laughs> uh, here in Finland, uh, there has been a phenomenon, a very popular to invite uh, foreign bloggers to talk about Finland and tourist destination services and attractions. What are, how these blockers can help from the Chinese market point of view? How po popular is the, uh, are the blockers in, in China? Uh, I think travel bloggers are, yes, I, I do think there are tens of thousands of travel bloggers in China. And uh, maybe a little bit different from the West society, maybe our Chinese travel bloggers, they usually have their own, like other professionals in their own industry. For example, very commonly they have uh, their professionals in uh, higher education institute or consultation or, for example, in journalism like me. Uh, so I think the Chinese travel bloggers, in some view, you know, it's like a, they can benefit, the, you know, uh, because they have a lot of a different expertise before, and they hold uh, some kind of other professionalism uh, apart from this kind of uh, traveling, photographing, or writing, or taking videos. So it's like um, the destination can benefit from the Chinese social media, uh, sorry, Chinese bloggers uh, community from a set of expertise and capacities. Mm -hmm. We are talking about many times about the travel websites and uh, 
what these Chinese, Chinese visitors are looking after from these websites? What kind of information? And uh, how you feel about that? Yes, I think this is a very good question. Like, uh, I think many research publications already said that uh, travel website is the primary source for uh, Chinese visitor or Chinese potential customer to look for a holiday destination. Uh, it's of course, it's very important that you have to portray your product in a very good way in a good travel website. And uh, here, maybe I think this is a very big question, but in a short way, I think three elements are very important. First one is localized content. So forget this word-to-word -word translation. You know, this kind of marketing information, if just uh, translated from German or from English or from anything, maybe they are, you know, it's not communicated with uh, the target group in a way that we can understand or we can accept easily. Uh, and the second thing is the pictures or visuals. They are very, very important. Like uh, all, you know, all the theory mentioned, like uh, visual journalism, they are very important. And uh, uh, it's the picture, especially this, you know, this uh, travel picture give you the inspiration and help you to, to make a decision for your holiday making. Uh, Maybe one more point is uh, uh, about the web design. I think many Chinese, um, I mean in China, many travel websites should learn something about web design from the West. Because your web design should be more, from my point of view, should be more flexible and dynamic. And maybe you should have a yearly change. To, you know, it's like you have a, a plan to, to have different theme, and the theme can uh, react with the real-time interest. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dennis. We are now signing from here, fi Finland, for a moment. Actually, it's very chilly uh, weather outside, but here in GP Time <laughs> Studios, it's like a sauna. So, <laughs> Dennis, we, we might be going to the shower for a moment. And after a small video, we are hearing about more about Austria in Europe. See you okay. then. Yeah, join us. <laughs>